Anthony, there's been a tremendous growth in the number of high net worth or wealthy clients both in Hong Kong and in China. Is the industry in a position where it can take advantage or is in fact capable of, of dealing with that opportunity? Uh, quite simply, I think uh, based on what we all see in the media today is that the industry is ill-equipped uh, to be able to cope with the tremendous growth that we've seen in the uh, high net worth um, uh, uh, wealth management industry. Uh, it's been well documented that there's been um, you know, sort of a musical chairs going around in the community with regards to uh, experienced private bankers and or wealth um, uh, advisors. Um, so uh, today um, the supply of qualified experienced people clearly isn't sufficient um, and therefore uh, the industry together uh, have come together uh, with Hong Kong SI and uh, we've had a number of discussions and have decided that now is an appropriate time to start to think about uh, putting together uh, a program that will facilitate for better training and for uh, individuals to come and enter the industry, not necessarily having to get a job with a private bank first before they get trained. And therefore, uh, the program which we uh, have put together uh, in support of the industry is to Phase one is um, a program that we've uh, brought in for, uh, via the Swiss Institute of Wealth Management to, um, to enable uh, people in this community to get a qualification that is uh, internationally recognised. And then uh, as, uh, beyond that, uh, we are currently working uh, on uh, launching um, a program that will enable for the Hong Kong community uh, to have a qualification and an accreditation that the whole industry will recognise and support. Anthony, why is an initiative like this not been done before? Well, it's not so much that people are, uh, historically uh, are not been qualified. I think they are clearly, the practitioners today are qualified. However, it is a, it's a very tightly knitted community uh, that the private, private banking and the wealth management community uh, historically, it's, um, it's a market that we're still growing at a very steady, but nevertheless, you know, sort of growth uh, in the past. It's only now that we've hit that sweet spot in the upper middle class in Greater China and indeed throughout Asia that we've seen an, an explosion of the number of people who've hit the mark where they need uh, advice from a private banker. So this sudden explosion uh, have uh, left the, the um, industry somewhat caught short in terms of um, uh, the number of people that's needed in order to um, uh, meet the demand uh, that's out there today. Anthony, in Hong Kong, the level of certification and also requirements around the industry is obviously a little bit more lightweight or light touch in comparison to some of the countries and jurisdictions, most notably countries like the UK or Australia or perhaps in the States. Uh, why is that? What this initiative shows is that the industry itself is saying that the time is now right for, for us to um, sort of um, collectively look to lift our standards uh, somewhat and to have a level of accreditation that we are able to eventually go to uh, our, our client base and say with confidence that these people are trained uh, you know, and, and are indeed trained very well to be able to service your needs. Uh, the issue as to whether it should or shouldn't, shouldn't be regulated, that's really um, an issue for the regulator. I think there are many industries uh, here in Hong Kong and indeed around the world which operates very, very effectively uh, on a self-regulated basis without uh, a formal regulator uh, having to, to impose rules or regulations ar ar around it. So I think um, this is what we're working towards and, um, and so as long as that's effective I think um, that, that, that may neglect sort of, um, the question of um, whether it requires formal regulation or not.
Anthony, what's involved in phase two of your initiative? The first component is rules and regulations which are critical to this region and that is not only Hong Kong law, rules and regulation but also Greater China rules and regulation, particularly mainland uh, rules and regulations. So we will be uh, f- uh, sort of uh, teaching uh, uh, the uh, course um, participants uh, rules and regulations in terms of trust laws, um, uh, estate planning rules and regulations in domestic China. And why is that important? It's, it's important uh, for practitioners here to know what these rules and regulations permit them to do, and, and it's only through that that they're going to be able to service their, their, their client well. So this is uh, you know, a very important feature uh, for practitioners here. The second part is to do with uh, the products um, that we have uh, discovered uh, through the industry. Um, Asian uh, client base and practitioners uh, tend to have a, a high demand for structured products uh, as an example uh, which is not seen elsewhere around the world so therefore there are certain products which are very uniquely in, uh, you know, and are highly in demand by uh, Asian clients and therefore it's important for these practitioners to understand these, these products well and to be able to service their clients and we all know structured products are not easy products to, to, to necessarily understand so therefore uh, this is uh, an additional component over and above the generic course which uh, one would have attained through the CIWM uh, phase one uh, to then uh, get it, uh, additional training. Anthony what's the third component of phase two? The third component then is uh, more soft skills. We all know private, private banking or wealth management is to really deal with clients and interact with clients and first and foremost it's about earning their trust and a lot of that is to do with soft skills. So even though you're technically competent, uh, if you don't have the necessary soft skills you're really not going to be able to, to, um, uh, to, to engage your client and to, and to win their trust. So the third component of the course which we are uh, providing in this phase two is to get industry practitioners to come and share and impart their experience and their skills uh, with our course um, uh, participants in terms of what are the critical soft skills they need to be able to attain and to excel in order to truly be able to work in this industry. So that hopefully sort of uh, rounds um, this uh, course participant uh, eventually uh, to, to, to be able to complete these courses and come out uh, and be ready to, um, to uh, front up uh, to, uh, to whether it's a private banking organisation or wealth management organisation to, uh, to be able to hit the ground running. Anthony, is this something that banks or practitioners will be encouraged to do or is it something they'll be forced to do by the regulator? At this juncture, uh, it's, it's very much um, it's, it's a voluntary thing. Uh, so there is no no uh, uh, at least at this stage there is no sort of a signs of uh, of a regulatory requirement to um, to um, do this. So one should really look at this and you know very similar to other professional bodies, whether it's a chartered accountant uh, uh, or or a CFA. These are uh, these are industry self-imposed standards which are now going to be. Uh, looked at as the standard which um, a practitioner ought to have in order to work in this industry. So that's the path which we're we're pursuing and it's being uh, driven uh, again as I uh, uh, sort of repeat by the industry itself in wanting this. So this has not been driven by the regulator although I'm sure the regulator will be very happy to see this and we can say with confidence having engaged various government um, sort of, um, um, sort of uh, entities, the various regulators are here in Hong Kong, they are very supportive of this initiative. Anthony, what's the reason that a practitioner would be interested in taking this certification or doing this type of training? This initiative is, is very, very specifically geared towards people who wish to pre- practice uh, and to enter the wealth management industry. Uh, so, and so this course I think is really the only course that is available at least here in Hong Kong uh, to, to enable somebody uh, to enter this industry. Today the only way you'll 
get to get uh, be trained uh, uh, and, and get training in the uh, private banking or wealth management industry is to get a job with a private banking organisation and then get training. Uh, this is now a new path and the only path available for an individual who wishes to come into the wealth management industry and without necessarily getting a job with a private bank or a wealth management firm first. And uh, so that alone, I think, is, uh, is going to see uh, uh, demand and, and will meet you know, sort of the requirement of, of the community. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, the program is, is fully now um, uh, sort of uh, completed um, and it has the full backing, uh, as I've said, of all the constituent sort of, um, sort of part of the community. So be it the practitioners, uh, the regulators uh, or the government. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, all, it's, all, it's all there um, and given that we have, uh, uh, have started to take enrolment for phase one of this um, uh, program, this is now the time to, to launch the full program and to ensure people understand why it is um, this is now the time for them to think about enrolling in the phase uh, in, enrolling in phase one of the program because it does lead to something else and the and the the, uh, the remaining part of it will be really for the graduates who come out of our phase one program um, so it all flows in very naturally